What's up, guys? A very busy Iggy here for Fat Pack Unlimited, and uh, we got more coming at you. I got, uh, I mean, look at this. This was just a collaboration of last night and this morning. These are all, this is one order, right? So, God, look at how pink that is. That is unreal, right? And it just, it just keeps going. So, um, yeah. Whoop. Caught it. Anyways, uh, we are going to be building a Ruger Security 9 today, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is what it looks like with the Olight PL Mini 2. Uh, it's going to be desert tan inside the waistband and is really no bells and whistles. There's not much to this build. Uh, it should relatively be easy, but because I'm saying that, I, I watch something's going to happen. Uh, but one trick I know with the Olights and if you look on any of the pale horse molds or any of the molds that come with them uh, when they do it the blocking for it is actually further out um, that way it, it pretty much eats the see how there's a part of the body comes out right there um, the on the molds the body comes out just a little bit more so there's none of that recess because this right here could cause if you're at the wrong angle a little bit of hang up in the holster um, so I've noticed that mold makers will bump the light forward a little bit and then they'll go off of that so when you put it in the holster your light is actually going to sit back inside the holster and it'll pretty much work perfectly uh, so we're going to go ahead and make a holster for this uh, it's inside the waistband right hand like i said nothing to it and we're going to get this out of here because it should have been out a while ago um, as far as an update But let's just cut the chit chat and let's go straight to molding. First things first, my fancier studio 15 by 15 heat press is on. It is heated up. Um, we haven't pressed it yet. We're going to do that a little bit later when we're ready. But uh, my settings will differ from your settings, but it's at 390 for 150. And uh, again, the reason why we do a cycle before the Kydex is in there. So is all the foam comes out, or not all the foam, all the moisture comes out of the foam because that will, uh, that will hurt you in the long run. You don't want that. You'll have little bubbles that show up and it's just not good. So um, that will help eliminate that. Also keep your Kydex in a pretty much a dry place. Don't keep it anywhere near where water can go. All right, so straightforward. Uh, I just took all the blocking or all the tape off the blocking that I did on the previous builds. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pretty much just tape this up and get where we're going. Get the medium tape right here. This is the easiest side to do. Again, five layers of tape. And that's gonna bump out the Kydex from the surface of the firearm so it doesn't get any scratches in the slide or premature wear on it. All right, there's five. Make sure it's on there good. All right, this side, there's no, if you remember it, there's nothing here that needs to be blocked, so we're not going to worry about anything. And the tape actually wraps around to the other side. Awesome. Uh, the only thing that's going to go here is the blocking for the foamy, which is going to be this right here. Uh, placement. I have seen some holsters where the placement is way up here. All well and dandy, but that doesn't give you good balance. I like to personally put it in the center. So we're going to have this hovering above the trigger guard. And it's going to be resting against the body. And the way I do it is, let me grab a foamy. The way I line it up is where your hand is for your purchase, your belt should be under your knuckles. And that's how I do it for all of my holsters. So right there, belt, line, right there. So as long as your belt is past your knuckles, that's how I do it. And that's how I do it for all of them. Another reason why you don't want it way up here is when you adjust your cant, it's still on the body, it's still on the frame. If you're up here, it's going to be off the frame and then you only have this little chunk and when you go to pull your firearm the holster will pull with it so we're gonna get this on here make sure we leave adequate space right 
and this is going to go here, but we're going to work on that a little bit. Um, pretty much we have blocking for it, and then we're going to have another small piece, not this one, but a small piece going over here, because when you have blocking like that, see, it's off the body, and that'll do the same thing. But until we get there, let's do this side. I might have to tape is moving this a little bit, so no biggie right here. All right, and we could do it this way, but if you notice right here, because we have the light forward, then there's a gap right here. So we can do it this way, and that indent that's gonna land right there is gonna be perfect for our retention. <clears throat> so that should be real nice. Taped on there. And you know I like to connect them over the trigger guard. Beauteous. And then we could feel all the controls which need to be blocked out as well. And you'll see I use other blocking because if we just put tape straight over it, like a bridge, and then what's gonna happen is you're not gonna get definition. All right, now let's get back on this side. And we'll probably do something like that. But I'm gonna need this over here and we need to find something that is adequate enough to hold that in place like so. So we will tape that down. And we'll line ourselves up where we need to be. Don't forget, at this point, you should be heating up your foam as well. My foam has been on top of a hot oven for a while, so I'm not too worried. And then we're going to take our 1.5, and we're going to come back a little bit with it. But if you notice, if we go like this, he's going to be off. So we'll take that, and we're going to go with something just a little thicker. going to be that guy right there. So, one, two, bam, that's going to go figure out the best place to put it. Good right there. All right, now we need to do our retention plate, which I might have to cut a whole brand new one. Got a lot of shop help today. All right, Ava? And Cleet? What's up, buddy? Hi, pretty girl. We got our other one. Where are the others? Yeah. Hi, Bean. There she is. Hi, baby girl. Hi, sweetie. Yeah, I can't forget you guys. Yeah, I know. Couple things going on. Our piece is cut. So pretty much what I do is I order them in either two foot by four foot sections or one foot by two foot just makes things a lot bit easier instead of doing just eight inches by eight inches. Uh, so anyway, this is the one by two. Actually, it's flipped. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, so I got this all prepped and all everywhere it needs to go. All right, and I take this. This is the one foot side. Bam, and then I just cut it right down. So it's one inch wide or one inch wide. Well, 12 inches wide by however deep I need it to be. 
Um, and basically what you want to do is enough to cover the end of the slide and the front of the muzzle. Uh, I generally put it to the top or the front of that. It doesn't really matter. You can go anywhere from the muzzle to in between depending on your setup. So uh, we got this right here. Now on top of this, oven was on so all that is warm. And this is currently getting the moisture out of that. It's got another 90 seconds before that pops. And then we're going to throw everything in there. And if you notice, there's four pieces of foam up there. Yep, four. Going to be going ahead and doing all four on this press because uh, we're going to get all of the definition. But uh, no, really, if you use four pieces of foam, then uh, the retention plate will stay in the center a lot better than if you don't. So let's get to it. Everything's in the press, and I'm outside enjoying the weather because it's hot in there. And had the garden started, yada, yada, yada. But um, I want to show you what happened the other day. So, you know, I I have, I, I like cars. This is what I do. And um, I have a 2018 Ram. I love this truck. Yeah, I, it was truck I've owned. So here it is. Check this out, right? I love it. So I'm taking the girls to Hobby Lobby. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, this giant, giant turkey came out. And look what it did. I can cry. So on top of going through my grill, it rolled in my hood. Look at that. What the shit? So I got to get a hold of the insurance company now. So on top of that, right, and because of that, you got all the scratches on the bumper, so that's going to have to be fixed. And with the hood being buckled, look at this, it took out my fender on both sides, windshield trim is broken, oh, and, and you can't forget the blood splatter. Uh, I was, I could cry, that's... So now I'm going to lose my truck for ow, for like uh, a week to uh, get it fixed. But I have to have the insurance adjusters come out. I don't even know if my hood will pop because it is right there. Um, oh, yeah, I don't even think it's going to pop. So that's, that's, that's going to be fun for him. So anyways, back to Kydex. So bummed. I mean, bummed. Out of the press looking good we're gonna go ahead and remove everything cut it out and um finish this up then and for dinner back out for more i have uh like five or six orders that i have finished that i need to run through uh my shipping stuff that way emails and tracking numbers go out but let this get, uh, let's get this going and before i do anything else just there we go hooray all right, so got the gun out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna line up the muzzle, line up the rear end, and I'm just gonna draw where we're gonna cut where the trigger guard is. And our retention point's right here on the other side, so we're gonna put a screw here and a screw there. And come down like so. And we'll make this look a little bit better. And come up. All right, this is gonna go straight to the back. And we'll come down, let's see here. Yep, there, just in case there's an armor on it, I like to cut down to where the chamber is. Chamber is right here, which is bam right there. And grab another foamy, since I, apparently I misplaced the other one. Go ahead and throw that on. And just drill. Ooh. Ah. Let's clean it. 
cleaned up, not much to do. I gotta laser the foamy, but I'll laser that after. So for now, let's just get, um, all right. I did wipe it down with some uh, rem oil. We're gonna go ahead and throw these on here. All right, at this point I'm gonna check fitment and then we'll go from there. So our uh, retention will be right here. Um, if I need to adjust it, we're gonna go ahead and heat that spot right there, but I'm gonna check it out. All right, here we go. And all that retention is on the mount right there. And that's that little dimple. And that's all it is. And obviously it's adjustable with the, with the screws. So let's go ahead oh, and clean the insides of those out. And again, just gonna laser this. And this should be going out to Michigan. Right on the other side of the lake there. All right, so Ruger Security 9 with the Olight PL Mini 2. Oh yeah. Now this holster came out amazing and all the material that you've seen is bought from holstersmith.com. These guys are my go-to for absolutely everything on the channel. You can see here all of the attachments for inside, outside, the claws, the strapping, the clips, everything you need to make the perfect holster for you and your customer. Now, as well as all of those clips, you can get all of the full drones. For example, this right here is multi-molds and this is everything that multi-molds and on-target offers through holstersmith and knifekits.com now you got to remember as well free shipping over 49 dollars to the continental u.s which means one mold free right to your house also as you can see on the screen this is all the blocking that i use every single one of these i actually have in house pretty much uh, along with my aluminum stuff but you can get anything you want here and i absolutely love this place and it's my go-to